Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I am once again here at the Rock Island Auction House, taking a look at some of the cool guns in the September 2014 Premier Auction. One of the ones we have here is a Hall breech loading rifle, made at Harper's Ferry, one of the early U.S. arsenals. Uh, the Hall is particularly interesting because it is, it really is the, the first practically adopted, large-scale adopted uh, breech loading rifle in the world, actually. Um, it was sort of predated by the British Ferguson rifle, which was used during the American Revolution, but the Ferguson was made in very limited numbers. Um, the Hall was actually a standard issue, mass-produced firearm. Um, the other thing that makes these particularly interesting is that one can make a very good argument that Hall actually um, was the, the first guy to successfully develop interchangeable parts in a, a major production line. Uh, these preceded Eli Whitney's plant, which also did that, had that same capability. But the Hall rifles all had interchangeable parts. Um, these were manufactured at Harper's Ferry. The design was originally patented in 1811 um, and went into military testing, although the War of 1812 kind of uh, delayed, delayed the adoption. Um, they were ultimately adopted in 1819, and at that time they were actually a flintlock rifle. Uh, subsequent versions were manufactured through the 1840s. Um, they were used into the Civil War, uh, although they were no longer in production by the time the Civil War began. Um, and some of the later versions actually changed from flintlock to percussion lock. This is a percussion carbine. This is an 1836 pattern gun. Uh, these, the the hull, hull rifles and carbines in general were made in a number of different calibers. This particular one is a 64 caliber smoothbore carbine has a triangular cruciform uh, sliding bayonet under the muzzle. So when the U.S. government tested these rifles originally, the 1819 Hall rifles, they were found to be both more accurate and much more uh, rapid fire capable than the standard uh, muzzle loading musket of the day. Um, at 100 yards, the military testing found that these would fire about twice as many shots as in a given time period as the standard musket and they achieved at 100 yards an accuracy on a man-sized target of about 36% compared to about 25% for the smoothbore muskets. So really a, a significant improvement. It doesn't sound like a lot today, but uh, back then this was a major, major improvement. Now let's go ahead and take a closer in look of exactly what the mechanism is and how this works and well, what makes it cool. All right, so the working parts of the hull, rifle and carbine, are here in the action. You can see we have this kind of pot-bellied appearance. It's flared out here to get more metal to reinforce the chamber area. What we have is a hammer. This, on the very early guns, was a, a flintlock mechanism, but this is a later percussion gun. So we have a hammer with a, a nipple for a percussion cap. And then we have this hook trigger down here. What happens is I pull this back. You can see it detaches from this latch. That allows me to pivot up this entire breech block mechanism. Then, once this is open, I would load powder and ball in this, and then I simply push it back down, pull the hammer back to full cock, and you're ready to fire. So this was a pretty clever design by Hall, um, certainly innovative and early in its design. The problem, it did have a number of problems. Uh, most significant was a, a lack of gas seal between the chamber and the barrel. And so these would leak gas when you fired. Um, and that was a problem endemic to early breech loaders. It was something that was really only effectively and definitively fixed by the invention of the, the solid metallic cartridge case. All right, so the markings here. We have, of course, Hall's name. He was the inventor and the patent holder. All right, so markings here. We have, of course, Hall's name, the, the inventor. And then a marking to this was made at Harper's Ferry, which was an early U.S. military uh, armory or arsenal. Uh, U.S. property mark and a date of, eight, of 1834. Now, that is two years prior to the pattern model of 1836. Um, I believe this would have been a, an additional breech block that had already been manufactured at that time. And when they went to actually assemble the guns, they had updated the pattern. So you have an early breech block date on a later patterned gun. Actually, not all that uncommon in the scheme of things. Now, I do want to point out 
the rear sight here is offset to the left. That's because you have the hammer in the way. So if you take a look here from the top, the hammer would obstruct a center mounted sight. So they offset the rear sight. And then we also have an offset front sight. One other neat element to the carbine models of the hull is these, the 1836 pattern, is it does have this um, collapsing uh, triangular cruciform bayonet. There's a flat metal spring here that retains it in position. So to extend it, we have to press up on that. This is pretty sticky. You don't want to do this in the middle of a fight. You want to get this done before the, the battle starts. And of course there is this nice little notch right here in the bayonet. That spring drops into the notch and then you have a nice stable bayonet. This is like a 22 inch spike bayonet. It is frankly huge and I can't even zoom the camera all the way out to see it. So. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. This carbine is, of course, up for sale in Rock Island's September 2014 premiere auction. It's lot 1088, so if you'd like to take a look at the up-close pictures or place a bid on it, check out Rock Island's website, and uh, best of luck to you. Thanks for watching.